What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So today, uh, they've actually officially downloaded the co-op Kizuna Clash. Now, this is going to be dropping, this Sugo Fest will be dropping on the 11th or 12th. Let me get the exact date for you guys so you know exactly know when the Sugo Fest is going live. The 11th of November at 1900 PST time. 11th of November is when the Sugo Fest is going live. So mark it down in your calendars. Uh, that is actually, I believe that's the day the treasure map actually ends. And then automatically going into this. So also something to note is that likely during the treasure map, or we're going to get the full announcement of the Kizuna Clash. Um, also also giving us um, information on how to join a team and we'll have the website and uh, make sure to stay tuned for the channel make sure you ring the bell notification because I'll be uploading a video on when you need to join a Kizuna team because I know a lot of people missed out last time so make sure you have your notifications on because when that announcement comes I will be making a video for you guys so you guys know exactly when you need to get things done okay hopefully we get all of that out of the out of the way but let's talk about the Kizuna Clash Sugo Fest because it is a little bit of a strange one actually um one thing though that i am happy about is that eustace kid is boosted on this part now um legend kid is a really good character for this kizuna clash um but in my opinion i think the co-op kizuna clash is really poorly structured so we'll go through the structure then we'll go through the characters as well and then also we'll go over to extra island and check out some events that are alive on there as well all right, first thing is first, you can see the first multi is discounted at 30 rainbow gems, nothing really too crazy there. The second multi, interestingly enough, is a Kizuna Clash Sugo Fest only character. Now, this can be either of the new characters, which as you can see on the banner here, you've got Granny Neon, you've got Margaret, and then you've got, it's not a dual unit, but it's like, it's a singular character with both Marigold and Sandazonia on it. Those three characters are considered Kizuna Clash Sugo Fest only characters. However, another character that is also considered that is like the Rare Recruit Bello Betty that came out not long ago, the Kung Fu Chopper, the Christmas Monet, um, and then all of the Cobb Kizuna Clash units from the last one, right? So Nightmare Luffy, the Wedding Nami, and then the Brook. All of those characters can be pulled on that second step right there. Kizuna Clash Sugo Fest only character. So. It does seem like a good step, but the pull is so wide that it just doesn't seem like a very good chance to, to get the ones that you want, which obviously are the ones that are debuting on this banner. Now, it is a bit weird because honestly speaking, it should have just been one of the new characters guaranteed. You know, either Granny Neon or Margaret should have been guaranteed on Multi 2. I don't understand why they've done that. Very, very bizarre. But then you move on to Multi 3. It's a guaranteed Sugo Fest exclusive. I'm not expecting it to be a 1.5 or a 2 times legend rate. It should just be a base rate, so about a 4% chance. So the first guaranteed red on, on number 3. And obviously, Kid is the one you'd want to get. So hopefully, not too many other crappy reds are boosted here. Um, then the fourth step discounted to one rainbow gem yes you heard that correctly one rainbow gem multi so to do four multis it costs you 131 rainbow gems now uh, i guess a lot of people are going to ask you should i pull on the kizuna clash sugo fest no you should not be pulling on this sugo fest especially if you're free to play if you are the type of player that does spend on this game obviously it's up to you and if you already have teammates in the Cove kizuna clash coming up then you can talk with your teammates and if you've already got a lot of teammates doing pulls you probably don't have to do a lot of pulls but then again look pulling for these characters does not like make you get more points for your team in any facet the only reason why you'd pull for these characters is it makes team building a little easier and also it gives you additional tickets which in turn can net you so many rewards like uh, coming from someone who had all of the boosters last co-op kizuna clash the amount of tickets you get is crazy and you will essentially like just cap out on all of your tablets and cotton candy and tomes it's amazing trust me it is very very good um, but anyways, I digress. One gem multi is pretty crazy. The first time we're seeing it on global, well, list that I can think of or remember of, that's crazy. Then the fifth multi is, that's where the first guaranteed unit is. New five-star Granny Neon, who I think is considered like the quote-unquote lowest of the point boosters, like the least priority unit. Um, I believe Granny Neon and Margaret both have pretty decent specials. Um, we'll, we'll talk about them um, after we go through the steps. Multi-6 is a rate-boosted character, which again can be any of the co uh, the Cold Kizuna Clash units. Um, I don't know who else is boosted. We don't have the official announcement yet to really go through that. Uh, Multi-7 is a, as another uh, Kizuna Clash Sugo Best only character same as step two up there and then multi eight is also discounted at another one rainbow gem number nine is another rate boosted unit and then number 10 and there's no steps after it this is really stupid because it says you either get marigold and sandazonia 
or you get Margaret. So that is really, really bad because doing 10 multis and only getting the Margaret at the end is so trash. Considering, you know, Merigold and Sandazonia, they're so good for this. They are like the captain you need to have. I think during this Kazuna Clash, I'm pretty sure they have like a five times captain. It is absurdly strong. So if you get them, obviously it makes it a lot easier. And they've got a really powerful special in this Kizuna Clash, like what Nightmare Luffy did last Kizuna Clash. Um, so there we go. That, those are the steps. I'm not really that happy with the steps, considering the guaranteed units are so deep in the banner. And then multi-10, if you did go to 10 multis, which I don't suggest it, you don't even have a guaranteed shot at getting the really good unit you want to get. So yeah, I'm not really overly happy with these steps. You know, I, personally speaking, I'm still going to do five because I want to get a unit to give me more tickets. And I just really hope that I can get, you know, Marigold or the Sandazonium um, and the uh, Sandazonium Marigold or the Margaret unit along the way. And I, I will likely stream these pulls for you guys. So definitely look out for it. So now that we've gone through the steps of the Sugo Fest, let's go over to the recommended characters list and have a look at these units. So the first unit here is Granny Neon, who is guaranteed after multi number five, and she is an int cerebral fighter. Captain effect is pretty mediocre. You're not using her for a captain effect. Special at a 13 turn cooldown, reduces your crew's bind duration by three, and then reduces all enemies' defense up and damage threshold also by three turns, and then gives you a 2.75 chain lock. Um, look, that is not a terrible special, but what I don't like about it is that it only reduces all of those debuffs by three turns. If she had this exact special, but changed all of the threes into fives, she would be absolutely insane. Um, so that's a pretty big downfall there. Um, just because if you compare these characters to the previous Corp Kazuna Clash with Brook, Nami, and Nightmare Luffy, I mean, Nightmare Luffy you can disregard, but for Brook and Nami, both of those characters are still used a lot outside of Kazuna Clash just because of how amazing their specials are, having five turn debuff removal and having other really cool effects. Whereas like this, yeah, it's good, but you're not going to use it all the time outside of Kazuna Clash. If all these were five instead of three, you would definitely be seeing this unit be used a lot, that's for sure. All right, so uh, as for crewmate effects, int boosting stats by 40. And the secondary one states that it makes int and strength characters int and strength slots count as matching. Uh, it's essentially like V2 Akanu's captain effect. Very, very cool. Uh, okay, um, it's fine. Uh, support effect is 7% HP and recovery. So no unique support effect there either. That's, that's a little bit of a shame. So yeah, like it, it, it's a good unit, but not overly amazing, uh, like I was expecting. So now we've got Margaret, who is a strength fighter slasher. Interesting class combination. Uh, pretty much the same captain effect with a different class. Now her special ability reduces paralysis by three, uh, reduces all enemies' resilience and and damage reduction as well. Okay, by, by three turns as well. Again, would have been nice if it was five. And then if three or more strength decks or int characters are on your team, doubles your slot effects for one turn. Okay. Um, the, the, the boosting of slots is, is, is fine, it's whatever, but again, it's the same as Granny Neon. If all of those, you know, re removing of debuffs were five instead of three, man, these units would be so much better. Um, and then a crewmate ability, uh, it gives you an increased amount of damage against, de against decks. That's actually pretty good. And then boosts those colors attack by 50. Okay, so... Uh, and again, just not, not not a good support effect. Man, when you really compare these units to the previous Cop Kizuna Clash, they're, uh, they're nowhere near as good. But of course, they're going to be really good inside this Kizuna Clash, of course. Um, so now the final unit, the one that you would really want to get, if you get this unit, the, the Cop Kizuna Clash is just easy mode. But uh, here we have the Sandazonia and Marigold. So their captain effect, it's a, it's a three times captain when slots match. Uh, I believe during the Kizuna Clash, it's going to be a five times captain to those classes. So amazing, of course. Um, and then talking about their special, if the character is the captain or the friend captain, boosts the color affinity of your strength, dex, and int by 2.25 for one turn. Very good. And then during a Kizuna Clash, if you land three perfects, uh, it will go ahead and boost strength, dex, and int characters attack by a variable factor um, in the following turn, right? So, yeah, interesting. First turn you activate it, it's color affinity. You hit your perfects. The turn after, it's an attack boost. So this means that, you know, obviously when you're level 31 or higher, you get a 2.25 times attack boost with this special ability active in that following turn. So, meaning that if you have the double Sandazonia Marigold leads, you can get a 2.25 color affinity and attack boost with this one unit. And then if you have the, uh, what's her face, Margaret, you have the two times all boost. So, you know, with all of those active, you have so many things going on there. So that's pretty awesome to see. 
Now, if you decide to use them as a crewmate, which you're not going to in a lot of cases, make their own strength and int beneficial, and then base stat boosting, uh, and then again, a not very good, useful <laughs> support effect at all. So that's the rundown of all the new characters, and, you know, they're, they're okay, it's just the fact that, you know, with, with minor changes, they would be amazingly OP. So that's that, and then of course Eustace Kid is boosted on part one, which I'm really happy about. So anyways, let's go ahead over to the event page and have a look at what else is here, right? Because with the Cobb Kizuna Clash, one big thing about that is that we have this island right here. And if you guys played during the last Kizuna Clash, the Cobb Kizuna Clash that is, uh, you would know what this is, right? So the boss token quest. After you do your pulls, if you decide to do pulls, of course, uh, you, if, the characters that you summon for, you know, the new units on the banner, if you run them in a team, they give you like additional drops and that's really good, right? So you can stock up on these tokens. You can run this quest 100 times when it is active um, and it will be available throughout the entire Kizuna Clash period. Something you need to know though, is that this island will not be active the same day as the Sugo Fest debut. So as I said, the, the Sugo Fest drops on the 11th of November, the Token Island drops on the 12th of November. So you have to wait a day before this goes active. I don't know why, don't ask me, but that's the way that they've structured it. It's very bizarre. I also agree with that. Yes, it's very, very strange. Uh, is there anything in the Chopman missions that we should probably take note of? Well, uh, yeah, there we go. There's also something really, really awesome that I'm happy about is that all of the GARP challenges have reset. Finally, dude, it feels like it's been forever since they've reset. They reset on the 9th of November, I believe. So do we have anything too crazy in here? We've got, yeah, that's the standard one gem. That should be one gem. Yeah, that's and then five gems in the other one. So then we have the white beard challenge, which is into characters. You get a rainbow gem for all of those clears there. And then you get, after four clears, you get a limit break set. And then you also get 10 gems as well. And then the revolutionary army number two should net you as some gems as well. Rainbow gem times 10, all the, all the types. Yeah, okay, it's, it's all the standard stuff that we're expecting, so that's awesome. So, yeah, as, as we said, all of the GARP challenges are going to be active again, so you can do them all again on the 9th, which is actually during a treasure map, so you might have to find time to do that, but look, they're going to be available for an entire month. You have a plenty of time to do it, so don't rush out and do it straight away if you have other things to do, like treasure map or Kizuna Clash. After the Kizuna Clash is likely when most people are going to get to doing their GARP missions, so that's awesome, right? Anyways, uh, that's all I really wanted to go through for you guys in this video today about the new data download. So, Kizuna Kizuna Clash is coming, and we have a pretty crazy Sugo Fest alongside it with one gem multis, which we haven't seen on Global yet, and for some reason my internet deciding not to work. Very, very strange. I don't know what is going on there, but I guess we're going to wrap things up here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, and if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.